Hello friends, I hope you're doing well and staying creative. I want to talk about something a little nerdy today, and that is the relationship between phase shift and filters, specifically high pass and low pass filters, and how you can use this knowledge to make a more informed decision about what type of filter you're putting on your sound. And while you're here, you might as well subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that like button, and follow me on Instagram for all my jam videos, new releases, and other content. All right, let's get into it. So let's start off by answering the question, what the hell is phase? And it's really simple. Phase is just a representation of one cycle of a waveform, and it's measured in degrees. So if you take a sine wave, for example, and you measure it from peak to peak or trough to trough, that would be considered one cycle. Essentially, where the waveform starts repeating, that's when you've completed one cycle and the next cycle starts. And within one cycle, you have 360 degrees of phase. So if you have two sine waves playing at the same time, but they are 180 degrees out of phase, meaning that the trough of one sine wave lines up with the peak of another, that means they are completely out of phase and therefore they will completely cancel out. You will have 100% cancellation. And likewise, if they are in phase, meaning the troughs line up with the troughs, the peaks line up with the peaks, that means you get in phase, that means you are in phase and you have uh, summation. So they will add together and you will get amplified sound. So what does this mean for a filter? To answer this question, we gotta learn the basics of how a filter works. A filter induces a phase shift at certain frequencies in order to attenuate them or amplify them. He uses these same principles I just talked about with constructive and destructive interference. Here's where things get a little interesting. So the simplest filter you can have is a first order filter, and this has a slope of 6 dB per octave. And a first order filter induces a phase shift of 45 degrees at the cutoff frequency. So for every 6 dB per octave you're adding on to the slope, you're going up one order. So a second order filter has a slope of 12 dB per octave, third order has a slope of 18 dB per octave, and so on. And then likewise, you're also adding another 45 degrees of phase shift at the cutoff frequency. So a 12 dB per octave filter has a phase shift of 90 degrees at the cutoff frequency, and a 24 dB filter has a phase shift of 180 degrees at the cutoff frequency. Now remember what I said earlier, that if something is 180 degrees out of phase with itself, it will completely cancel out. Now, does that affect the performance of the filter? Will the 24 dB per octave filter that has a phase shift of 180 degrees sound worse than the 12 dB per octave filter that only has a 90 degrees phase shift? And the answer is yes, and I will demonstrate this now. All right, so I have this 909 kick here, and by the way, listen to this on like headphones or a good system that can reproduce low end or else you might not be able to hear the difference. Um, so anyways, I have FabFilter Pro Q2 set up with two different filters um, with this AB thing. So on A, I have a 24 dB per octave filter and on B, I have a 48 dB per octave filter. So now, like we said, 24 dB, you have a 180 degrees phase shift and with a 48 dB per octave filter, you actually have 360 degrees of phase shift, which actually means it's in phase, because 360 is one cycle, so now you're back to zero, so it's actually in phase. Now logically, you might think that the 24 dB per octave filter will retain more of the, the kick's uh, like sub-bottom weight, because it's not rolling off as much of the low frequencies. Now listen to the difference. So I'm playing the kick with the 48 dB per octave filter, and I'll A, B between the two. This is 24, 48, 24, 48. Now the difference is like night and day. With the 48 dB per octave filter, you're retaining a lot of the punch and bottom end, but when as soon as I switch to the 24 dB per octave, you lose a lot of the weight, and that is because of this phase shift. You know, you have 180 degrees of phase shift at the cutoff frequency, which in this case is the fundamental frequency of our kick. So you're actually canceling out a lot of the sub frequencies. So this actually 
kind of leads me to suspect why Ableton's EQ8, if I throw this in here, only has two filter options. This is just my guess. And you know, they only have a 12 dB per octave and 48 dB per octave filter. And my guess is that they don't want you using the 24 dB in case you don't know what you're doing or if you don't know which one's better, it's just better to avoid it at all costs. That's just my guess. Maybe they just didn't put it for other reasons. Who knows? But the difference here with this kick is pretty obvious. You know, if you you know, if you put the 24 dB per octave filter on, you know, you're going to lose a lot of the impact. Um, and, you know, it's just not going to translate very well to the dance floor or any big system that can reproduce a lot of bass. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you need any mixing or mastering services or private lessons, contact me at djdurasai at gmail.com. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out some of my music, and yeah, it's a, it's a wild world out there right now, so stay safe, stay creative, and peace out. See ya.